Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to look back at the Mesh Tools menu. And I'm just going to break off the menu here. At this point, as I'm recording this, we have predominantly most of these tools covered. We've still got a few left to do as of this recording, but today I want to look at Slide Edge, the Slide Edge tool. So in order to look at the Slide Edge tool, we need some edges to slide, right? So I'm just going to create a cube just as a quick example. Make it a little bit bigger. I'll hide the grid like I tend to do. And I'm just going to increase the subdivisions. I'll click on Polycube 2 input over here. And let's just add some divisions this way. Just selecting these names, middle clicking and dragging to increase those divisions a little bit. And I'll just select an edge. And I'll click over here under Slide Edge. You can see the middle drag with middle mouse button to slide. So if I'll hold down the middle mouse button and click left and right, and it slides that edge along the surface. If I middle click and drag up and down, it's not really meant to do that. You can see it's kind of jitters around a little bit. It's not really good to control. So it's really left and right that it's really looking for as far as the movement goes. Okay. And that's pretty much the gist of it. So now we're going to look into the options and things and see what else we can do. So slide edge options. Hit reset just to make sure we have our default settings here. So just a couple things here. First of all, settings. We have two modes we can choose from, relative or absolute. Okay. And then snapping settings. We have a checkbox here for using snapping at all. If we turn it off, of course, the snapping settings are no longer usable. And for our snapping settings, we have snapping points and snapping tolerance. So several different options here. Let's just look at snapping to begin with. So right now, using snapping is turned on. So I'll zoom in here a bit. Middle click and drag. Left and right. So as I get towards like, you see there, kind of snaps right there. And here, where it originally started from, as I keep going this way, snaps there, and it snaps at the end. So it has these little points along that it's snapping to. So let me undo that. And so snapping points is set to 1, and snapping tolerance, let's increase snapping points up to like 10, just to see what happens. So now every, every increment that it moves, is it, it's snapping to a point along this edge, along this surface. I'm not really sure if I can visualize the snaps, but you can kind of see it there. It's not moving very smoothly. It's just snapping point to point to point with a snapping point set up to 10 like this. If I go to zero, it'll snap back to where it started from, and it'll snap at the ends, but nowhere in between. So you can imagine there's a default snap points at the ends in the middle, or I should say where it started from as a starting point. So snap points at those three places, if you have snapping points at zero, it's not adding anything. Snapping points one, imagine it adds a point between each of those three starting places. So it's there, back to the beginning, and there. So that's the one, the snapping points it's adding. If I did two, there, there, and then the end. So it added two like on this side and two on this side. So that's what it's doing. It's adding points on both sides of the starting position of the edge. So think of it that way. And then we have snapping tolerance. Right now the value is pretty low, about 0.1, and it controls how close the edges are to the snapping points before they snap, okay? And this is in, uh, right now it's a relatively small number, 0.1. If I increase this up to all the way up to one, for example, middle click and drag, you see the distance from, it's kind of hard to tell, okay, go from here to there. So it jumps from here to here like this, this far. If I take this number back down, let's say 0.1, like it was to begin with. So the distance from this, where it starts snapping is a bit less. I can go any even smaller. Let me undo the movement first. Like you can barely even tell it snapped. It kind of went. I kind of moved right through it. So with a value of 0.1, I 
and do this again. We got a little bit of a distance there. Let's say 0 0.05. I, I want to try to get it so I can tell. There we go. So there's a little bit of distance right there. So that's just how, how much of a distance it takes to snap to the snapping point. And then, of course, it turns snapping off. We have no snapping going on at all. Even back at the beginning, we don't have a, a snap back to where we started from, or even at the end, we just kind of drag it all the way to the end. So that's essentially the snapping section of this. I can turn it back on for now. Now, as far as the relative versus absolute, right now we've been using relative. I'll turn snapping off again, actually. I'll do absolute, middle click and drag, and there's not much of a difference, primarily because we're dealing with a pretty uniform grid of edges here. So let me get something a little bit more uh, modeled. So here we have this shape, you know, some kind of shape of something. And I've gone ahead and have this edge loop right here. You can see that it's kind of wonky, it's not straight. I did that on purpose, just so we can kind of see a difference here. So let's say I use this edge loop as my example, kind of quote unquote organic edge loop, something that's not just set on the grid. So let's say relative first middle click and drag and notice how the edge as I drag it to the right if you look down here at the far end and look at the closer end try to get this bigger in the screen here I can just close this for now notice that they each reach the end at the same time you see that so even though this distance to cover is much smaller and this one has a much larger distance to cover, they both reach the end at the same time. Now let's do absolute. So now I can't drag anymore because that side has reached the end while this one's still halfway through. So with absolute, whenever one of these edges that we're dragging reaches the end of the line, it'll stop, even if this side over here has not reached the end of the line yet. But with relative, it kind of averages that distance between everything, and so they all reach at the same time, even going the other way. Same idea. Back to absolute, going the other way. It stops, no longer lets me drag through. Or this way, it stops. Doesn't let me drag through. So that's the difference. And that's, mainly you can see that when you have a, an edge loop that's not evenly spaced like this. So you can see those differences. Now, there are a couple of quote-unquote hidden features, and you wouldn't necessarily know about them unless you look down at the help line, way down here. It says, select an edge path or loop and slide with middle mouse button. And in parentheses, it says, hold shift for move along normal. Oh, that's a new option. Hold the shift key while I do this. So holding shift middle click and drag and here you can see it actually moves along the the normal the normal direction or the surface direction of the edge loop as opposed to moving along the edge it just moves outward or inward along the surface normal oh that's a totally almost a completely different function if you think about it let me drag like this middle edge loop if i just don't hold shift middle click and drag kind of goes back and forth but hold shift and all of a sudden we get like this expansion we can do, like expanding these this out, you know, equal distance around the surface. That's holding shift while you're doing the, uh, the tool, the slide edge tool. Now there's also another option, which I don't see listed anywhere on here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see it up here in the description or in the helpline. But hold down to the control key. So like I said before, on absolute, if I'm not holding control, just middle clicking and dragging, it'll stop when one of these points reaches the edge. If I hold control when I do it, it doesn't stop. It can just keep going. See that? So there's no limit to how far it can be slid, even past the original threshold of the surface it's in. And that's if I hold control while I'm middle clicking and dragging, left and right. So some interesting uses, use cases, especially the holding shift and doing the normal thing, like just being able to expand outward really easily by using this slide edge tool. Again, under mesh tools, slide edge. Here's the options over here. And again, we got a couple of hidden ones in there. So hopefully you found this video useful and interesting. 
and maybe learn something new. If you have any questions or if I missed anything in talking about this tool, and feel free to comment below. I'll uh, respond the best I can, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for watching.